Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a blessed day. So in today's video, we'll be talking about a change to the ENSO outlook. We are potentially looking at a pattern that has only ever set up once in history. And matter of fact, that was actually a few years ago. Outside of that, this is a pretty rare and historic pattern, and I want to give you guys a brief rundown on what this might mean for this winter. I will be making more videos with this pattern and what this means for winter and its consequences in the coming days and weeks. But for now, I just want to give you a brief introduction. I'm going to do a quick rundown of the ENSO and what that is and what an ENSO neutral La Nina El Nino is. This will only take a few minutes, but if you already know what that is, I advise you skip forward. But for those new that are watching and don't know. So the ENSO is a region of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean in between South America and Australia, essentially. And whether or not these waters are cooler or warmer by half a degree, meaning if it's 0.5 degrees Celsius on average warmer, it's an El Nino. If it's 0.5 degrees Celsius, it's a La Nina. And anywhere in between, it's a neutral Enzo. So what I meant by we are looking at winters that are going to be back-to-back -back Enzo neutral. Last year, we had these waters that were just in between those 0.5 margins on either side. And this year, it looks as if we may be seeing that again. At least that's what it seemed like up until a few weeks, uh, up until recently. Where now it seems as if they're at least briefly will be a La Nina. And these El Ninos, La Ninos, and Neutrals are all tracked on these type of graphs. As you can see right here, we have different three month averages and you could see the 0 0.4, 0 0.4 negative. So that would be a neutral because it's in between. Here we have a El Nino in the red, a La Nina in the blue. And up until recently, it seemed as if there was gonna be two back-to-back -back neutral ends of years. And it most likely still will be, but there is gonna be a little twist and a little change. So with their most recent forecast, the Climate Prediction Center now believes that there is going to be a brief period of La Nina conditions during the fall and early winter. Now, again, how long these stretch, how strong is going to be uh, very important on how this winter plays out. And unfortunately, we still don't really know that. That doesn't change much in, in terms of the research that I did earlier with the fact that the second neutral winter is usually brutal. But... It allowed me to see things from a slightly different light and a slightly different perspective. So, again, looking back at that winter, 2020, so 2019, 2020, our first neutral, and in 2020, 2021, we had that La Nina. So, notice that that La Nina is, uh, or was, quite a bit stronger than pretty much anything we will get. Even if we do trend towards a La Nina, it's very unlikely we will get a 1.3 reading for an average of three months there. And notice that as we got towards December, January, into February and March, this La Nina weakened quite significantly, and it was classified a weak La Nina. So naturally, I want to take a look at the winter that 2020-2021 was, and many of you probably remember it. So this is an average three month of that winter. December through February 2021. You could see overall it was cooler for much of the United States. However, this doesn't tell the full story. If you guys remember that year, it started off that winter, it started off very warm. December 2020, the only areas that were cooler were portions of the Southwest, the Southeast, and much of the Northern United States, and especially the Northwestern half, and so Southern Canada were very, very warm. And if you were to look towards January, this almost looked like a heat wave, because it really was a warm January for many of these areas. Where things drastically changed was February. February of 2021 20, was, as you can see by the map, and you probably remember, it was that famous deep freeze where Texas got absolutely paralyzed by the cold. We had temperatures that were very, very negative across much of the United States. In fact, all of them, all the states and into southern Canada, especially southwestern Canada, Manitoba, Alberta, Saskatchewan, British Columbia, all very, very cold uh, m m days during February. So, what I'm trying to lean at here is that notice that when we had the La Nina during that first part of the winter, there was warmth and it the, the cold air was not allowed to come in. And then during the part where it turned more into a weak La Nina, where the La Nina's influence was weaker, it turned very, very, very cold. And I believe I have a reason as to why that happened and why when the La Nina faded, and went more towards the neutral, we saw an explosion of cold air. But first, I need to give you a little bit of background about different patterns, and I need to explain a few things. The reason neutral E and SL winters are usually quite a bit colder across the North American continent, especially the US, is because the El Nino and La Nina are absent. And 
El Nino and La Nina sometimes do bring cold into the United States by vast amounts, but often what they do is influence the weather in a in such a way that smaller weather patterns like the AO, the NAO, which are key features in bringing cold air down into the United States, aren't allowed to do their thing. And these are cyclical. So they often throughout a three month period during the winter, while they may not be bringing cold during the whole winter, at least a few times are able to bring cold if they are not blocked and impeded by. And during neutral ENSO years, they are allowed to do that because there aren't major influences blocking these patterns from forming, which usually bring cold air. While in El Nino or La Nina, sometimes in rare cases, given based on the numbers of La Nina and El Ninos there have been, they actually help these patterns, but in most cases they interfere, they mingle, and they block them. So during a neutral, these patterns are allowed to essentially flourish and do their own thing, which doesn't necessarily mean cold all the time, but again, given how long winter is, that usually means at least a few Arctic outbreaks, which is why neutral Enzo winters typically tend to be colder. El Ninos and La Ninas are extremely complex and their exact impacts and as to especially why it is that they happen are still being researched and are still unknown fully. So again, why a La Nina or an El Nino sometimes disrupt these NAOs, these AOs, it can be uh, a question that honestly might not even have an answer and it probably doesn't. But the thing is that I've observed and through research on these neutral years, neutral Enzo years, is that these patterns often have a lot easier time setting up during neutral Enzos. And that would make sense based on the fact that we had that La Nina year that strengthened, we had warmth, and then it weakened, its impact waned, and we had cold air coming in. And if you go to the forecast of this year's potential La Nina, you can see that it is going to be a lot more brief and a lot weaker, even if you take the more aggressive scenario, a lot more weaker than what we had in 2020, 2021. So essentially this La Nina is gonna be so weak and so brief that it may not even have a classic La Nina impact on our winter. And even if it does, which again, I mean the classic La Nina impact differs from year to year, but it basically won't have a potential to disturb the natural patterns that occur in any significant way because of the fact that it's going to be weak and short-lived which is why again I see weather forecasters on you know just amateur enthusiasts kind of like me making predictions and they incorporate the La Nina into it significantly I do not believe it will be as impactful as they think as even if I go back to this chart um, and show you there are many many times where especially in that neutral those two consecutive neutral Enzo years which I showed you from 2013 2014 for example look how close it came to um, it was pretty much a La Nina at points here during that winter but it wasn't classified as a La Nina because it wasn't long enough so you may be wondering now what are all these little uh, cyclical patterns you were talking about and it's defining features are two high pressures the bigger one uh, across south of Greenland, across the North Atlantic, which is why it's called the North Atlantic Oscillation. And whether or not that high pressure is there and present and very strong, combined with another high pressure across the Gulf of Alaska, <clears throat> usually turns into quite a bit of cold air for the United States because the cold air is filtered down and it's what we call a blocking pattern as these high pressures are stubborn they don't move and sometimes this could result in a lot of arctic air for a prolonged period of time so one of them is called the nao it's the north atlantic oscillation and you can see i have a picture of it brought up right here another one of these is the ao so not the nao but the ao so arctic oscillation and this one is a little different it's not with the blocking high pressures it's to do with the polar vortex winds and basically when they're strong it is a positive phase and that does not allow as much cold air to sweep into the united states because think about the the polar uh, winds as a top a spinning top when a spinning top is spinning very quickly it doesn't wobble it's pretty much stationary and in order for the united states and Europe to get uh, cold weather, this polar vortex needs to wobble. These lobes of vortex, vortices, if you ever heard the news call it a lobe of the polar vortex. In order for those to happen, the winds have to be weaker so that top, if you will, starts wobbling and brings in some of that cold air across these areas. And you combine that with a potential NAO where one of these lobes gets stuck, you get very, very cold for a very sustained period of time. But that's, again, that's a rare pattern. You don't have to have that for a cold winter. 
And notice that this basically shows you again, less strong polar vortex winds, less cold stratosphere, the air pressure system weakens, allowing colder air to move south and warmer air to move north. So that is basically it for today's video. Just wanted to give you guys my new thoughts about this upcoming winter, some new research and new ideas that I put together. Hopefully it made sense. And hopefully it also makes sense why I still believe that this upcoming winter is going to be probably very, very cold, despite there being a potential La Nina, or even if that La Nina disappears, then even more so, right? So hopefully you enjoyed, hope you learned something new, and I'll catch you all on the next episode. See ya.